Hi guys. Um, I <laughs> sorry I didn't mean to startle you or anything. That's uh, yeah. So I want to introduce myself. Um, I am uh, Josh, and, and this is Andrew, uh, and we're going to be giving you a talk talk here in just a minute on uh, building fast and powerful search apps, uh, and and show you kind of what we built with Lucifer Site Search, and uh, well, we'll talk a little bit about it in a minute. Um, so yeah, a little bit about us. Um, yeah, I've been at LucidWorks about three years. Um, I've been working on uh, features of, of Fusion, such as Quarry Workbench, and uh, building kind of search UIs for, for a while now. Um, and uh, yeah, we uh, both of us have been working on uh, LucidWorks Site Search. Uh, uh, and yeah, uh, Andrew, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, uh, my name is Andrew Kanalet Visut. I work for LucidWorks for about five years now. And um, I got started with the first project, which is um, the open source banana project. Okay. It's a da uh, dashboard okay, for visualizing data in solar. Okay. So um, some of you in interested can you know, ask me questions later. And that's also was uh, my first topic okay, for um, you know, the old conference with, you know, revolution. Okay. Now we renamed it to Activate. So me and Josh have been working on um, the site search for about a year now. Yes. So which is you know, we're going to talk about today. Cool. So uh, yeah, first on the agenda, who are we? Oh, that's done, I guess. Um, so yeah, we're going to try and keep it a little lighthearted, uh, this thing. Uh, we plan on giving you kind of an overview of kind of what LucidWorks site search is. Uh, then we're going to kind of give you a bit of a user story about you know, someone, someone who might, uh, you know, want to use LucidWorks Site Search. Uh, we'll give you a brief demo, but then we'll kind of dig into the, the kind of behind the scenes and, and tell you kind of how we built um, some of some of LucidWorks Site Search. Kind of show you some of the highlights um, there. So, I guess uh, you guys ready? Yeah. All right, let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So. I guess first we have a question. Like, has anyone here like implemented a site search uh, before? Yeah. Uh, so there, are, there are a lot to do. Pretty easy, right? You just kind of throw it up and. <laughs> yeah. No. That's what we think. So it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So you know, it, it takes a while to kind of get it set up. You have the, what do you have? The web crawlers. Is that is that a thing you need to do? I don't yes. Know. So there's a lot of um, you know. So once you get into the um, little details of having to build a site search solution implementation, then you started to realize that there are a lot of different components that you have to take care of. Okay. For example, one of the first pain points is you, know, you have to find some way to um, get the data into your search engine. Right? So the most popular one probably going to be the web crawler. Right? So you want to you know, build a web crawler or scraper, go into your public website, get the data, you know, pass it, and then you know, bring it back in a proper format into your search engine where you, know, you can do some useful stuff with it. Not only you have to build a web crawler, you have to maintain it also, right? Because you know, the website is always changing the format, the language, you know, JavaScript, you know, CSS and stuff. So your web crawler is you know, going to be you know, not understanding the, the changes. So you have to you know, keep maintaining it and you know, editing the code, you know, make sure that it can bring back the data correctly into your search engine, otherwise, you know, your site search is going to be broken. Okay. Right. Yeah. And we have some other stuff up here too. Um, you could read it. But yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So we wanted to introduce you to Gary. You know, he likes to wear his like fancy little tie. You know. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, he runs a consulting company. You know, it's uh, all for cats and things. Yeah. yeah so we're gonna, you know. Um, Present um, from the point of view of Gary, you know, just a fictional guy. You know, maybe he can be Andrew. You know, <laughs> we have to work on the site search project. Okay, so he doesn't know what. Okay, so he pretty new to you know the search experience and you know the project stuff. So he doesn't know. Okay, one day he come into the company. His boss say, Okay, Gary, we have a new project for you. You have to build a site search. Okay, for the company. Okay. So now, okay, so what's the goal then? Um, so Gary have to build, um, have to get uh, the public information on his website, be able to um, index all the consultants, all the services that his company provide you know, to his um, clients. Okay. 
So he has no clue how to start it. Luckily, we have answer for him, right, Josh? Right, uh, this thing, uh, Lucid Works site search. So we, we built to kind of solve some of these problems and we'll, we'll kind of go into. Uh, detail. Yeah, detail. Fast and powerful. Yes, That's fast the title. and powerful, right. Um, yeah, so we built Lucid Works site search. It has a few things uh, and we're gonna go kind of in detail. So we have automatic simple to administer crawlers. We're using AI and ML under the hood. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, we have kind of intuitive control over business logic uh, so that you know you don't you don't have to dig into you know deep into you know files and things that may be in you know uh, structures that you know are hard to manipulate. Um, we provide powerful data segmentation and um, yeah a few other things. So um, yeah, okay. So now, let's get you know, to the detail, right? Okay. So one of the first requirements, you know, typically is how can we, um, how can Gary, in this case, ingest the data of his public website you know, into a search engine? Okay. Easy. We have a built-in web crawler, you know, built into the site search. Okay. It's one of the many data sources that we, you know, come out of the box. Okay. So as you can see, right, we have the screen um, for configuring the web crawler. All you have to do, one, input the URL, two, you know, in case you want you know, some more advanced option, like limited how deep you want to go into um, the, the, um, the sitemap, right? You know, three layer, four layer, or the maximum number of document that you want to ingest, right? You can do that in the you know, show more option. And lastly, you can also define the topics. Think of it as like a tagging, you know, when you do the Twitter, it's kind of easy. So it's a way that you can group your data source, you know, partitioning it or data segment, you know. Right. So that way, um, you see why, why um, you know, how it's useful in, in uh, later slide. And boom, you just, you know, save your config, index the data, that's it. Everything, you know, index so easily. Again, fast and powerful. Right, yeah, so, yeah, I guess, uh, so yeah, Gary would just put in his URL. You know, he could hit save and he can come back later. Uh, and then, you know, just to, you know, we start indexing after a few seconds, and, and really you start being able to like adjust how how things look uh, right off the bat. Um, so you know, does this look right? We have this concept of templates. So you know, you have different result types that you can you can choose for for your results if you have you know different types of data. Um, and we allow you to kind of customize them in a, in a kind of easy to use, kind of drag and drop, you know, add a field, take away a field um, kind of way. Um, yeah, but uh, let's say you wanted something a little bit more advanced. Let, let, let's say you have kind of data that, that lives somewhere, like if it's a database or a custom application and you wanted to, to import it into your application, we, we provide uh, the tools to, to ingest that data uh, with our, our push API. Um, yeah, and it's it's pretty simple to use. We give you kind of, uh, you know, the, the, the tools out of the box to kind of get up and running uh, with a, a crawl command to test it out, and then you can kind of port that to your application or your use case. Um, cool. Yeah, so we want to make sure that um, not only it's easy for the people to use, okay, because um, our uh, one of the main goal of, you know, having um, a site search, okay, as a solution to as a solution to people is that we uh, we don't want people to like having to know how to do you know developing the uh, the search logic themselves or have to you know go into you know the coding and stuff. We want to provide uh, a lot of functionality through the UI you know, easily and get you up quickly. But at the same time, we understand that you know we have a lot of users, right, different use cases. Some may not you know our UI may not you know provide enough flexibility for your use case. So we also have an advanced feature in this case, like a push API, and also you know, you're gonna see uh, later is a search API. Okay. So the push API is allow you or your developer to be able to um, index your own data, you know, push it into the site search, okay, which, you, which is powered by uh, Fusion, Lucid Work Fusion. And the search API later that you're gonna see is allow you to pull back the result that you already indexed into the site search. Um, so, with all of that, let's see. Yes. I guess. So next get, challenge for Gary is, right? Well, so now, yeah. Let, let's you know. Let, let's say you have some uh, you know some 
uh, you, you've crawled some sites, you've put some data into your system, like, you know, Gary's boss maybe is like, hey, that's cool, uh, but I have some custom like business things that I needed to do. I need to put, you know, at the top of my blog, I want to put, you know, this specific blog post, you know, when someone's searching over the blog. Uh, maybe I have, you know, documentation and I want to put the, you know, to the top results like a specific page, which is kind of a landing to kind of get people started. Um, you know, we, we provide the tools for that uh, here too. And, and we try to make them uh, pretty simple for, for a user to use. And in this case, you know, you type in a query, uh, you could just hit a button and that'll just go to the top of the results. And then, you know, if, let's say you want to kind of manipulate that later, we provide easy drag and drop way to kind of uh, put it, you know, in the right order that, that you want your users to see. Um, also, let's say you have something that you don't really want, you know, anyone to see on your website. We, we make it really simple to just, you know, do a search and, and delete it. And this is all uh, possible from the admin UI console, so it doesn't count against um, some of the AI features and, and UI features that we have as well. So, um, and that, that's kind of the other side of this, is that we've, uh, uh, LucidWorks Site Search provides, you know, is built on top of LucidWorks Fusion, which means, you know, we're leveraging, uh, you know, AI in terms of signals, recommendations to, you know, really, try to get out of the box um, kind of the results that you would want to see on your site and it'll match over time uh, kind of as your users make more queries, we'll, we'll adjust with those, um, with those user expectations. Um, cool. Um, yeah, and on top of that, uh, uh, we, yeah, we, we also provide um, kind of out of the box autocomplete. Uh, I don't know. Uh, if anyone in here has tried to use autocomplete with uh, in, in, with solar before, but uh, it, it takes a bit to set up. There's there's uh, uh, an amount of configuration that's not necessarily like easy to figure out uh, out of the box, and we've just kind of provided it here, and we have a couple of options uh, that you can use. So you can uh, uh, use queries or documents. Cool. Yes. Or we can also turn it off too if you don't like it. Okay, and in, and um, in the future we um, gonna try to expose more of this advanced feature through the UI, um, and you know if you guys have any, you know if you guys try it out and you know you feel like there's some area that we can improve, you know please please you know let us know, give us the feedback, yeah, and we make sure that we you know work on those features. That's right. Oh, and uh, I decided to point this out. It's uh, did you mean autocomplete? We or did you mean an auto so spell checking? Or spell yeah. checking. Auto correction. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we, we just do that out of the box. Like, we figure that's something everyone wants. So, it's, it's just yes. so all, all this feature, like um, Josh already mentioned, is powered by uh, Lucid Work Fusion in the back end. Okay? So, what you, you're seeing is, is uh, you can think of it as a um, Fusion search app. Okay? We have like a UI, you know, and then everything um, from the UI is interacting through the Fusion RESTful endpoint. So all this come out of the box. Okay, you can if you don't like it, you can customize it in some way. Okay, and we're gonna talk about it in the last section of this um, presentation. Yeah. That's right. So going back to Gary and Gary's use case. Yeah, yeah. We, we, um, we forget Gary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So you know he he's kind of gone through all of this. You know his his manager is like, hey, I wanted to customize it. You know we have these features that are out of the box, but also we're we're allowing you to kind of, you know, uh, you know. It, with a precision way, kind of pick exactly what you show across a, a certain uh, set of queries. Um, so hopefully you'd like that. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. Cool. So next slide. Uh, next the question. Yes. Oh, okay. So next, um, the powerful data segmentation. So okay. So now back to Gary, right? So he definitely, if he uh, a one man company, then it's no problem. He don't have to segment the data. <laughs> but his company is pretty big. And he have a lot of you know different departments. Okay, now they all um, have data ingested into the site search. Okay, Lucid Work site search. Now, okay, different people come. Okay, maybe one one group come to him and say that, oh, okay, our blog. Okay, we want to you know put this um, content over here. You know, search box, and we want to have like maybe a, uh, a category or the facet. You know, on the left hand side, right. The second group may come and oh, okay, you know, we don't want. This content, you know, like the other group, okay, we want to be different. 
Okay, so we want you know um, a different content you know for our user you know in a different way, right? So, okay, so different use cases. Okay, so Josh, how can Gary you know satisfy all the different requirements from you know his users? Right. So um, we provide uh, powerful ways to kind of segment your data. So uh, one of those ways is, is kind of as uh, Andrew briefly mentioned before is, is topic. So we, we basically what that means is that. You know, if, if you have some data over here, you have some data over there, you can kind of mix and match in different parts of your site. So let's say you have like a home page uh, and you want to search over all your content, like you can do that. But then you have like a blog area of the section and then you just want to search over the blog in that section. You can do that with, with this solution, with our, our segmentation capabilities. Also, we provide a way for, for users to easily um, uh, select you know, or segment themselves uh, via via faceting. Um, uh, cool. Um, so we wanted to talk a bit about kind of you know now very cool feature. Yes, we call it embed, but it's too technical. <laughs> so we call it what robust deployment. <laughs> You're right. <Yeah. laughs> Still technical. <laughs> right. Right. Um, yeah. So okay, you've gone through all of this, but you know where do you want to deploy this? Like really, like. Is this like something people visit? Yeah, but uh, probably it's on your website. You know, it's site search. Like, so we we kind of provide an easy, accessible way to kind of take all the stuff we've been talking about so far and put it, you know, simply onto your your website uh, uh, in a responsive way. So, uh, you know, it it works well on on mobile devices or uh, what you might want to throw at it that way. So yeah, you just you know take you know our our script kind of embedded on our site, and then we have it in, uh, done in a fine-grained way so that, that you can kind of pick and choose what portions you want to show up where uh, and within your, you know, let your dev team or whoever's working on the development kind of figure out, like, the positioning of, of all these things and, and get it looking right. You know, we, we allow them to customize and, and get it looking with the, uh, with the right kind of look and feel uh, to, to whatever your brand, brand is. Uh, like this, for instance, um, this is, uh, I guess I've done, oh, yes, I, I almost forgot our language features. So uh, one, one of the cool things about language uh, with Lucidworks Site Search is we've, we've really tried to get it, uh, kind of a full stack solution, so something that's, that's really simple to, to, to use. Basically, you crawl, crawl your site, uh, and we'll do automatic content detection. Uh, and, and figure out the, the proper language, and then we'll allow you to, to choose, uh, you know, for, uh, on your site which language you, you would like, like to, to choose from. You know, we translate the UI, and all of this has uh, the ability to be overridden uh, in case you have, you know, a specific, uh, specific requirements which, which you would need to meet. So let's say in Gary's case, he has an international consulting agency uh, you know, on your German site, you would be able to search just the German content. On your English site, it would be English, and and so on. Um, yeah, and of course, like this is this is. I'll I'll show you this in a minute, but this is just the uh, average uh, uh, Squarespace site. You know, it, it it can work. You know, anything you throw at it. Um, and let's say you wanted to. You know, if you had a more specific requirement, uh, we also do provide APIs, uh, uh, as Andrew said. So this, this is the, the query, query side API, so you can have uh, programmatic access to, to this, you know, for your application, uh, uh, however complex uh, it may be. Like, you can just leverage the API and our, our auto-suggest APIs uh, to kind of um, do those more complex use cases. Uh, and here's a workflow. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, um, so, um, so, so after um, oh, back to Gary. I think we keep forgetting Gary. You should just change the name to Andrew. It's easier. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so so once um, Gary done with his um, size search project, right? So he started with you know indexing data into um, the search engine, um, Lucid Work Fusion. And then he customized, you know, the content to satisfy, you know, different needs from different um, use cases in his company. Okay. So now, right? Usually, okay, it's gonna, you know, people start 
the real people start using it, right? On the website, start searching, you know, typing some keywords, clicking on some result, right? So next, you know, naturally you're gonna come back to like, you have to maintain and tuning the search uh, relevancy. Make sure that the search result that your user get back is, is relevant, okay, is, is accurate, right? It's what they want to see, right? And uh, site search come with the analytics, okay, built in functionality. Not only you can look at, you know, the pretty pie chart, you know, like for example, the top queries that the user, you know, issuing and okay, what query, you know, return no result, right? The, which is gonna be a big problem, okay, for any use cases. We also allow you to take action right away, just, you know, from the analytics page, okay? You can see we have, um, in this case, right? So you see that, okay, people who come to, you know, Lucidworks, for example, keep misspelling Lucid, okay, with no, you know, no S, for example, and it gives uh, those users no result, right? That's, that's a problem, okay? Because they're gonna go away, you know, and not, you know, come back again, right? So we want to take action, for example, by maybe create a synonym for the misspell word, right? Or maybe we can, you know, promote some content, okay, for those words, okay, to make sure that they see something, okay, that's relevant to, um, to their search terms, for example. So that's just some example of, you know, how we um, try to um, make sure that um, you can get started with the site search very quickly, be able to allow your user search some result, have um, some functional website, and also the last phase of, you know, of the project is to maintain it you know, and keep it going, you know, be able to tune, customize to whatever your um, user behavior keep changing over time. That's, that's right, and, and another handy feature here is, is you know, if, if you have a content team and they wanna know where their gaps in content are, what are people looking for, like this is a handy way to kind of quickly visualize you know, what, what those content gaps may be and they can, you know, they, they can build the content to match the, the, the missing queries. So um, that's, that's another great use case here. Okay. Um, and I don't know, what, what do you think? What do you think uh, that um, you know, Gary's boss is thinking right now? Gary boss, um, okay, so before we think of Gary boss, let's you know, go through what we just go through um, from the, uh, the slide first, the screenshots, okay? So we see uh, how the site search is fast and powerful, right? So, because everything, most of the things that come um, built in, you can use it pretty much right away. Yes, we done an extensive research, right? Josh, before we build this product? We oh, do, yes. right? Yeah, we do, we do. <laughs> yeah, it's been over a year. Yeah. Okay, so we have um, a lot of the common um, data sources that people are gonna use, like for example, the web crawler. We also, um, I'm not sure if it's in the screenshot, we also have some um, CSV, JSON data source. You can just you know, upload it right away. But if that are not, um, are not enough, then we have the push API, where you can have your developer team you know, push any custom content, okay? And we have the um, AI and ML functionality um, powered by the Fusion. And we also allow you to customize your contents by promoting some of the content or blocking some of the content okay, from the user view. And um, last but not least, we also have the user analytics functionality built into the dashboard, right, where you can take an action directly from that dashboard. Okay. So I'm pretty sure that Gary Boss is going to be pretty happy. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Oh. Oh, yeah, that, cool. <laughs> oh, I have to be cool. Okay. Um, yeah, so I guess now we're gonna try and uh, jump into a demo here. So obviously laws of demo apply, so bear with me. Are you gonna do a live demo? Uh, we'll see, okay, so already I have kind of this uh, setup. I've already crawled some content here. Um, so I've gone ahead and crawled some German content, looks like it's gonna reload on me. Just to give you a sense, you know, uh, all, all I've done here is I've gone in, I haven't really customized much, but I have a bunch of options here if I wanted to kind of dig in. Uh, you know, I can go in and I can exclude like large parts of my site if I, if I didn't wanna like fine grain kind of delete each thing, uh, which is pretty handy. Um, so in here, obviously I've already crawled this content, so um, I'm not gonna show that live. I'm sure that would be fun. Um, but as you can see, we already have this kind of data segmentation. So I wanted to kind of show you, you know, if, if you put your, your mind uh, to, uh, to where Gary might be, like he may have a bunch of consultants. Well, in this case, we're gonna have a bunch of movies. So um, these movies here, you know, I may want a different format to kind of, you know, get them looking a little nicer. So maybe, Maybe I want these movies to be 
uh, displayed as cards. So I'm going to go three per row. Um, okay. And then I also want to go in and kind of make them look a little nicer. So, uh, I think this is going to be the one. Very nice. Awesome. I'm done. Wait, no, I'm not. I, I need to do a little bit more. Um, OK, let's go field style, image. That looks pretty nice. Ooh. And going to put it up top. Cool. So that looks pretty cool. I'm just going to look at the movies here. Um, uh, that looks pretty nice, I guess. So now I want to look at it in square space. So this was square space. This is what it was like before. I haven't reloaded my page. Um, so I've actually also pulled this into Firefox. I'm going to refresh it here. Um, and now there's my movies tab right in a square space uh, example. So now I can go in and I can uh, look directly at specific categories of movies. So if you can imagine this for consultants, you know, this could be headshots and it could be the, the consultant's name. Maybe you have uh, some of the, the, you know, different services that each consultant provides uh, in a really simple to use uh, 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 way. And, and we've only spent about, what, 30 seconds doing all this? So uh, pretty nice. Um, and also, I did want to show you briefly uh, the language feature. So if I go back uh, here, I'm uh, going to go back to my page builder. Uh, I, can, I can easily select a language to search across. So in this case now, we will search across German language. Um, oh, this is my embed. Uh, so now I can independently set uh, the embed UI language from, from the language of uh, the search. So what this is going to do, right off the bat, you'll see I changed the language, and now I'm seeing a bunch of German pages. Um, you know, maybe I don't need this uh, card display anymore. Um, yeah, so now I have my German language site, uh, which, which is going to turn, turn up my German results. Um, I didn't do anything special. I just pointed it at a URL, and it, it crawled this site. Um, and that's about it. So uh, what do you guys think? Yeah? All right. That was a big round of applause if you couldn't hear it on the television. <laughs> um, cool. So, uh, right. so what, what I really wanted to get to um, is uh, actually show of hands. Who wants to know a bit more about like behind the scenes, how we did some of these things? Uh, no one, really? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank yeah. you. <laughs> so yeah, we're we're going to tell you a bit about the fusion side of these things, uh, um, uh, and we're going to start off by telling you about building a fusion app. We're going to tell you a little bit about uh, automated fusion uh, deployment. Um, there's there's another talk later today, uh, right before the closing, I uh, with Joe Streaky and. Uh, Alan Eugenio, and they're going to go way more in depth on kind of the, the, the automated deployment and, you know, VMs and, and uh, uh, Docker and, you know, containerization, th th those types of things. But for right now, uh, let's get into this stuff. All right. Do you want to talk about? Uh, yes. Yeah. All right. Let's okay. do it. So, um, so we started by okay, creating uh, what we call well, in, in a fusion term a search app. Okay, if you, you know, try the Fusion, I, I believe it's starting with Fusion 4. Okay, we have this concept, right? So we created a LucidWorks site search app, okay? So everything that we use in the site search, uh, the cloud that you see, is contained within this app, okay? All the index pipelines, um, query pipelines, okay? All the solar configs, okay? The logic, okay? The AI and ML, okay? To do uh, the, um, the uh, language translation and stuff, okay? Everything is contained in, within this one app. So that's why um, you know you get all the AI ML capabilities, you know, automatically, okay, because it's you know backed by a fusion. Right, 
And yeah, so, so now that kind of goes into the, this, this idea of the uh, automated Fusion deployment. So we're using the Web Apps API. So Fusion allows you to not only create all the configuration within an app, but also deploy apps on top of Fusion, on, on top of that platform. So we're using that to deploy our application on top of, of Fusion. So, and that's built, you know, again, uh, we, we are using JSON configuration for, for many of, of these assets. So, you know, as Andrew said, you know, our index pipelines, query pipelines, all of those kind of export as JSON assets. So we're able to, with our app, kind of include those and import them in. Uh, so that allows you to, to leverage, you know, like standard workflows such as Git uh, uh, to kind of keep track over time of, uh, of what those assets are. Um, also, um, yeah, as I said, you know, we're, our services are running containerized and on, uh, in VMs, uh, both. So, uh, what that means is we're able to kind of build a cluster uh, so that we can we can kind of, you know, scale up to kind of larger uh, larger needs. So we're not we're not just for kind of small applications like. Yeah. Um, um, cool. Also, uh, just uh, for the people like me who want to know like what's your tooling, <laughs> um, uh, we're running uh, AppKit, which. Which is um, kind of the, the the same framework that that App Studio is based on. If if you've been in uh, one of those talks, uh, uh, also Maven, uh, Webpack, uh, uh, and we're using all this to kind of build an, an application, which we're able to deploy on top of of these APIs. Um, cool, um, and yeah. Now we wanted to kind of get into you know one of the the meatier areas, which is uh, language inside search. As as I said before, um, it's uh, you know, we, we've tried to do an end-to-end -end kind of implementation that, that really takes care of most of, of the meat and potatoes uh, that, that you would need to do if you're building a, a language-based application. So with our solar config, uh, for instance, uh, we are taking, um, we, we are creating uh, language fields. So each of our languages is a solar language field, um, uh, and we're, we're doing content-based detection uh, in an index pipeline. Uh, um, and with that, inside of that index pipeline, after we do our content detection, we take uh, the output of that detection, you know, that's going to be some, some sort of language and maybe a locale, and we're mapping that uh, to our solar fields. And then uh, the solar field then, um, uh, we, we, we use then on the uh, query side. So once we have all our data, you know, uh, across the system, each, each uh, page, you know, is assigned a, a, a language where we store kind of the base, you know, the base content uh, in, in, in one field and the language dependent fields, you know, they're, they're both in the same document. Uh, so in our query pipeline, uh, you know, when you're searching on a specific language, we are combining, uh, combining that search using boosts. So we're boosting the language content up to the top of your results. Uh, so, you know, even if you have results in multiple languages, you're still going to get the full breadth of that search. Um, uh, you know, if, if there's something missing in, in one language, you'll find it in another. Um, <coughs> so, and we're also doing so, some, uh, some other uh, things, such as we're, we're, we're using um, the, uh, what is it, the, uh, yeah, we're, we are using, um, uh, yes, highlighting. Uh, so we are, we are matching the, the language with the highlighting so that uh, when you're doing your search, the, the highlighting is automatically uh, uh, done. Uh, again, in a query pipeline stage. Uh, and and um, yeah, we're, we're also taking care of you know, other, other pipelines such as your autocomplete and, and, and these types of things. Um, and with all of that, uh, we get to kind of our common embed layer, which is, you know, we have a, a embed framework, and then on top of that, we layer on um, our UI translation, so, so that, you know, that'll be German, French, you know, wh whatever it may be. Uh, you know, we're able to, to know based on kind of how you've embedded onto your site, uh, uh, the language you want, and we're, we're supplying those fields in the UI uh, with, uh, you're able to, on a page-by-page -page basis, uh, override those. So if, if you have something really custom you want to do in, in terms of the language you're using, uh, uh, using these overrides allow you to, to do something like that. So if you, instead of search, you wanted it to say, like, my search or, 
Gary and company search, like in the search box, you can do that, um, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that, my friends, <laughs> we are friends now, um, is Lucid Works Site Search. And uh, you, you can uh, find more about it uh, or uh, sign up. Uh, yeah, get a free yeah, trial, free trial. Uh, at lucidworks.com slash site search. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, any questions? Any questions? Um, I mean, about my guinea pig. That's, this is my guinea pig, by the way, so. <laughs> Name? Name? Okay, so yes, this, this is Pixel. Um, she is, she's uh, about <laughs> six months. Um, yeah, she, she has like a white patch, patch on, on, on her backside. Um, you know, also, I will take questions about Lucid Works Site Search. If you have. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, uh, I guess we've answered all the questions. Uh, OK, so, okay, so um, usually when there is no question, it's either we did a very good job uh -huh. or we did a very bad job. Oh, OK. So they, they don't know what to ask. Oh, OK. But, but I assume it's going to be the first one. OK. So we did a very good job. Okay. Thank you. Right. I'm so proud now. So okay. You, you talked oh. about a web crawler. What about a site that has SharePoint web crawling, um, other data sources that they want to bring in, like GitHub? They have their own GitHub um, application. Do you use the connectors that come with Fusion to allow them to, one, crawl their website, pull the, uh, their SharePoint content in um, through the SharePoint connector, go out to whatever repository that they may have. Right. And use those, or is it strictly just basically you got a web connector, go and be happy? Right. Well, I mean, you will, we hope you'll be happy with our web connector, but uh, you're, you do have other options. So uh, with... So with if you want to do multiple options? Yeah. Um, so so that, that is possible today uh, it, with our SaaS application. Uh, with uh, via our push APIs. However, if you have like a more advanced use case, uh, it is possible to, to leverage Fusion uh, platform as a service, and and you'll have the full with the, okay. the full connectors, which which are possible to use yeah. there. Uh, but yeah, that that may have some different uh, requirements from what you've seen here. Yeah, because with the size search, right, we don't ex expose the Fusion admin UI at all. Right. Everything you have to interact through the, um, the size search yeah. UI. Yeah. Yes. Yes, and, and, and that's with the SaaS application. Yeah, so um, the option in this case is going to be the push API. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, anything else? My other guinea pig is named uh, Quark, just, <laughs> just so you know. So you have two. I have two, right. Can't talk uh, when one. That's right. They, need, they, they like each other's company. They'll squeak at each other. And, yeah. Anyways, thanks a lot, guys. It's, Thank it's been a pleasure.